here on the Farm Bureau guest line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team, Mississippi Farm Bureau. We are going to uh, attempt to do something now that um, we have, uh, have we're here never done Radio before. We're here Row at, uh, at SEC Football Media Days, and our neighbor. That's Matt Muscona's voice you hear right now. At uh, Sports Talk Mississippi. Are, are you on? Yeah, we're okay. on. I'm introducing. Uh, so Richard Cross, great dude, and uh, you see him all the time on the SEC Network as well. Had this wild idea. Hold on, you got to talk into the mic. I was telling my so, audience. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was telling my audience what was going on. Yeah, but now our audience can hear you. Also. Okay, so this is Richard Cross for those in Louisiana and all the parts yonder. Um, he had the idea of doing reciprocal radio. So you've already explained this to your audience? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think so. So presently, I am on their show, and now Richard is on our show simultaneously since we're on at the same time. So we just saved a little time from doing interviews with each other to talk about Ole Miss and LSU. We'll just knock it all out at once. How about that? I love it. You start. By the way, Michael Borky, this was his idea. And oh, wait, Borky? Houston executed it, and I'm just oh, wait, just Houston. Houston. Houston's a guy, too. Thank God for him. I'm just handsome. Yeah, no, that's just... Uh, Hmm. Hey, Dad said I'm just handsome. Well, he just blocked the entire camera shot a second oh, ago as hey, well, but hey, that's no, all right. No, hey, uh, you, you. All right, you were asking us a question a second ago um, yes. about predicted order of finish, and this is actually something that we've talked about for a while. The SEC media has generally been predictable in their picking teams in the order that they're going to finish. Like, we know that Mississippi State's going to be picked last. That's not a shot at Mississippi State. That's just kind of where Mississippi State gets picked. Are you aware year. that Rivers is, is a Starkville native? Yes. And a Mississippi State alum? Yeah, but, but Brian Haydad would tell you. He's like, State's going to get picked last, and then they're going to finish higher than that. But are, there, are you con- a, Wait, are you convinced State's going to be picked last this year? In the West? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you not? Well, all right, so I think it's a very interesting year in this respect. I think it's, I think it's the worst quarterback le- year in the league since 2014. And I think... Look, there's only five quarterbacks that are coming to this thing, which is it, it's a pretty good indicator when we come to this, right? If there's yeah. if you're bringing your quarterback, it's kind of indicative of where your program is. Uh, now, I firmly believe that every school should have to bring their quarterback. I I believe that that should be non-negotiable. Whether they have named a starter or not, you yes. bring a quarterback. Non-negotiable. Every school. Jackson Dart should be here. I agree. There's no reason Who, at by all. By the way, is going to be the starter for Ole Miss. Richard, there is no reason that the University of Kentucky is coming here without Devin Leary. That is stupid. Why are we here? We're here to tell great stories about the league. Is, is Devin Leary coming from NC State not one of the most interesting stories? He's, he's not coming. You know who's coming? Get, get, get the list of the it Kentucky guys. It, exactly. I don't even know their names. It, anyway, when you have a, sta- a stable quarterback situation, I think it's, it's going to be more interesting. I'm not sold on Zach Arnett at all, but I think the Will Rogers bump is going to play in some people's minds. Yeah, that's fair. I think Auburn will finish last. We'll be voted last. Oh, you think Auburn will be voted last? We'll be voted last. Okay. Should they be? Um, I need to look at this at their schedule candidly. All right. Um, so, so while you, do, but while probably, you do that, but the, the debate really is who's going to because I don't know who they're rotating because they, they have Georgia, but I don't know who they're rotating cross divisional is this year. So Auburn gets, uh, oh Auburn gets Vanderbilt. Okay. Right. There you go. All right, State, you're in the you're, – you're, you're, sorry, you're the caboose. Um, so the question is, top of the, the standings, it's either going to be LSU or Alabama. Uh, I went through a, a, a deal a few years ago where I was like, you know what, I'm going to be cute. I'm going to pick LSU or Texas A&M or somebody else, and then they finished like fifth. And guess what, Alabama won the West again. And I said, you know what, I'm not doing it anymore. So Nick Saban's <laughs> not there. I'm not picking anybody yeah. else to win the West. Brian Haydad's been saying for months now, I'm picking LSU to win the West. Mm-hmm. Here's where I get hung up on it. When you look at what Alabama lost from a year ago on a team that lost two games, they lost a ton. Mm -hmm. They got questions at quarterback. They don't have a proven running back. I think they're going to be talented there. They lost five starters on the defensive side. They're pretty good on the offensive line. They don't have a dude at wide receiver. Why would I pick them to win the West? So, yes, I think when it's all said and done, given what LSU has coming back, I'm picking them to win the West. There's every reason to pick LSU in the West. They still have to go do it, obviously. The interesting thing about Alabama is um, I all the things you've said are right, but in the past we've still just given them the benefit of the doubt. I used to, like every year before the season starts on on my show we always do fall previews. 
So we'll have someone on media who covers. And I got in the habit every year of whenever I had the Alabama, whoever the Alabama beat writer on or radio person that I had, I'd say, Alabama lost 18 guys to the draft. Does it really matter? And then I would go, Alabama lost this coach. Does it really matter? Yeah. And, and the answer was always just no to everything because reload, replace, replenish, Nick Saban, yada, yada. But I'm with you. Like, they don't get the benefit of the doubt this year. They played five 50-50 games last year. Five. They went, they went three and two. They, they lost on a last-second field goal to Tennessee and an overtime on a two-point conversion to LSU. They were that close to being 12-0. Right. But Texas, Bryce Young's Houdini Act, Ole Miss. Gumby. The Ole Miss, and then uh, yeah, A uh, and M. Yeah, I mean, those three games, you could be seven and five. A and M was to throw in the end zone to try and win it. Ole Miss to throw in the end zone to try and win it on the final play of regulation. And Bryce Young looks like Gumby in avoiding that sack off the edge. Texas doesn't break down, and they get the win on the road. So yeah, that corner Probably blitz finished where they should have. If Bryce Young gets sacked on the corner blitz, the game ends. Yes, and they they lose to Texas. Right. So. Yes, I mean Bama was also a breath away from being seven and five. Again, I'm not saying that they should have been seven and five. They won three of their fifty fifty games with Bryce Young. And now you've lost Bryce Young and two coordinators. And I just I, I'm not Richard, I'm not burying Alabama. I'm not saying they're gonna stink. I'm not saying they're going seven and five. I'm just saying I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt this year. What do you think of Ole Miss in the West? Okay, so uh I've referenced this so many times. Last year, you remember our conversation last year? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, have I, you actually looked at their schedule yet this year? Yes, I, I, I have. <laughs> um, but that was a great lesson because last year we're sitting at media days and Richard sat across from me and was like, "Look at Ole Miss." We did it live. We just pulled it up and went boom, boom, boom. And I was like, "They're gonna, they're gonna be seven and zero when they come to Baton Rouge." And they were seven and zero when they came to Baton Rouge. Um, I so I have a uh, answer this question for me, then I'll tell you. You said Jackson Dart's going to play quarterback. Why Why did Spencer Sanders come to Oxford if he's not going to play? Honestly, I'm not sure he had as many options as people thought that he had for some reasons that weren't necessarily related to football. And I think Ole Miss was really good to him on the NIL front. I think those are the two biggest reasons. And he probably also believed that he could win the job. But you got to remember Jackson Dart – Last year was his first full season as a starter, right? He had a cup of coffee at Southern Cal, played in four, five, six games out there, had an injury, had, had to come back from that injury. If you look at the way Jackson Dart played, he got better as the season went along, even though Ole Miss's record got worse as the season went along. I mean, it got harder, whatever. Yeah. But he played winning football in the second half of the season, even though Ole Miss didn't win a bunch of those games. Do um, they, they finished second place a bunch in the second half of the year. Okay, so – Look at – the schedule's weird, too. The Tulane game is at Yulman, isn't it? Yeah, it it's, is. It's on campus at yeah. Yulman. Um, so it's Mercer at Tulane, Georgia Tech, which – Georgia Tech is not very good. Right. Uh, um, the Ole Miss won in Atlanta last year 42 nothing. Yeah. They're, they're – wow. At Bama, LSU, Arkansas, at Auburn. That's a that's a yo stretch right there. What does is, what is Ole Miss do in that stretch? At Bama, LSU, Arkansas, at Auburn. And there is a bye before Auburn. Yeah, I mean, you, you would hope they go 2-2. Two and two. If you're an Ole Miss fan, you're hoping they go 2-2, two and two, which means losses to Alabama and LSU on paper and wins against Arkansas and Auburn. Arkansas home game. Ole Miss has been much better against Arkansas in Oxford. Fayetteville's been a house of horrors for Ole Miss. And um, you're trying to win one on the road against uh, an Auburn team where I feel pretty confident saying Hugh Freeze has that game circled. I just don't think Auburn's very good. I agree with you. My here's my that one roster is bad. Yes, um, my one fear about Auburn is I, I Hugh Freeze is still a really good coach. He is, and they're they're not going to be very good, but they're going to beat somebody. And Ole Miss traditionally plays terrible, or not, I won't say plays terrible. Ole Miss doesn't beat Auburn. Um, I don't mean this in any way to be a slight. I wouldn't consider. Can I wouldn't. Um, include Ole Miss in, in what I'm about to say. O Auburn's going to beat someone they have no business beating. We said that just a little while ago, but they're also going to lose to somebody they should not. I think. To. I mean, I could see Auburn being five and seven this year. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't think Auburn's going to be great. But one of those wins is going to be a oh man. How about like, at, how about at A and M? It could be at LSU. Like I I don't think they will. But like if you told me that 
Auburn comes to Baton Rouge and Hugh Freeze has the game of his life and co- would it like, yeah, I mean, I, I could I could see it happening. We got forty five seconds okay. to break. I don't know if you can hear the music or not. Nope. So where are you picking Ole Miss fourth? Are you gonna pick them ahead of State and Auburn, but behind LSU, Alabama, and A and M? I'll probably pick them third because I think they went ahead to head against A and M. Matt Muscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, good friend. Always nice to catch up. This-